Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be doing a deck profile on my Dragonic Overlord deck or Dragonic Overlord The Rebirth. I just call it Dragonic Overlord or just Overlord deck uh, because it runs pretty much all the Dragonic Overlord variants. So I put together this deck with the goal of not having to abandon the end and have to go fully The Rebirth. And the deck seems to work just fine the way it is. Uh, the nice thing about it is that it has a lot of surprise factors um, and it... It's immune to certain strategies that are like anti rear guard or anti, uh, you know, stuff like that because it is restanding based. So it's like a one man show. Or you can just solo your opponent. You can solo the opponent's field just with your Vanguard alone, which I think is pretty cool. So to start off, I built the deck using only the cards I pulled. So if you saw my unboxing videos, you know that I only have two Dragonic Overlord the Rebirths. I did not go to the sneak. I didn't trade, I just bought the four boxes and pulled both of these. So two, Dragonic Overlord the Rebirth. Uh, really, two is enough. It works fine. Uh, you'll see based on the grade threes that are running, this deck does run nine grade threes. Um, next, my two, Dragonic Overlord Break Ride, and then my one, original Dragonic Overlord. So I pulled this guy from the very first BT1 booster box that I had. So I kept him in, took out the Trial Deck one and the reprint one for these guys and for this guy so three Dragonic Overlord to help you get that cross ride and then with these with these two you have the break ride effect which is pretty good uh, it's I don't think it's as good as people say it is because it only restands when you attack a rear guard but it does think of it like it's making the opponent go minus uh, they lose an interceptor or something because who would guard that? And then you're just going to restand and then attack the Vanguard. And then if it's this guy, he's going to restand again. So, so that's these are the new guys. This guy's kind of just in there just to help you get the cross ride or an emergency ride or something like that. And then the surprise element is that I'm still running my Forge Gun Overlord the end. Four of him is required because he's Persona Blast. Nice thing about him, he's not dependent on Limit Break, so he can go off as soon as you ride him Grade 3, or Turn 3. Like, if you open up with him in your opening hand and nothing else. Uh, he has he gives you a lot of options. Like I said before, he's not Limit Break. He doesn't have to hit a Rear Guard to restand. He doesn't have to hit a Vanguard to restand. He just has to hit. So he can hit a rear guard, he can get a vanguard, doesn't matter. He can, as long as he can hit, he can restand. Now I know a lot of people are like, well, that's not that good anymore. Um, I think it's still break, cross break riding him. Keep in mind that he and Rebirth are both cross ride with Dragonic Overlord, regardless of whichever one. So this is cross ride, this is cross break ride, this is still cross ride, obviously, and now this is also cross break ride. So the end is not dead in the water. He, he still can benefit from the break ride the same way the Rebirth can. Um, the only difference is that he has to hit, the Rebirth doesn't. Now the Rebirth has to attack a Vanguard to be able to do his restand. So against Glendios, that's not very good because Glendios can just redirect it to a rear guard and he can't restand. So that's why the end still has a little bit of an edge, although he does have to hit, but still it forces, it puts a lot of pressure on the opponent. So, 9 grade threes, it works. Grade twos, I was lucky enough to pull three of these. So, three of the four boxes each had one of these. So, three Dragonic Burnout. He works pretty well. And he's not Counter Blast based. He helps you. Uh, the deck will thin quite a bit from all the restanding. But it won't thin as fast as, say, Genesis with Minerva restanding and stuff like that. Um, but it's still... It's still pretty good to have a card like this that helps regenerate you from decking out. And then three Berserk Dragon. It's just a really good card. My one Burning Horn Dragon. One is really enough. And then I kept two of these in. My Flame Edge Dragon. I carried them over uh, mainly for Dragonic Burnout because he's going to Soul Blast. So you don't want to Soul Blast away your Dragonic Overlord if it's in the Soul. And then the other thing is that if you have to ride, say, the N or the Rebirth first, like it's your first grade three, nice about this is this because it is soul charging on hit, uh, it can it can sort of randomly soul charge an overlord. I know it's not a very 
a very good thing to rely on, but I mean, the option is there. So two of those. And then two Dragon Dancer Arabella. A lot of people question me at locals and they're like, why are you using this? The reason why I chose to go with this is because the deck is a one-man army deck. Like the end and the rebirth, even even regular Dragonic Overlord can restand. Or even if you you break ride, you can even do something crazy. Like you can break ride Dragonic Overlord on top of Dragonic Overlord, and you can just get the restand that turn, and then you know later on go into something else. But um, the reason why I went with this is because this does power up your Flame Dragon. All the Dragonic Overlords are Flame Dragons, so it does give them that extra uh, 5K attack. When it's placed on R for Counter Blast 1. Uh, and because we, I do run the Unflipper in here, uh, it is a little bit viable. If I wasn't going to run this, obviously, I'd probably run two more Burning Horn Dragon or I'd put back uh, Nahalem, the 10k vanilla. But this is just, it's there because it's, like I said, it's a one man army. You're going to attack multiple times. You might as well power up your Vanguard as much as you can to eat up as many of their perfect guards and as many of as many cards from their hand as possible. So that's why I went with this. And it seems to work just fine. I rarely ever use the effect, but when I do, it just forces out, it, it, it can mean the difference between getting rid of an opponent's 10K or an opponent's 5K or an interceptor. So that's why. Uh, on to grade ones. Four Dragon Dancer Maria. What I recommend here is four perfect guards. Uh, I was considering running Gimmel, the new Quintet Wall, but not for this deck. Uh, mainly because I'm running 9 grade 3s. That's really the only reason why. And because the end is a Persona Blast. So you don't want to accidentally, like, you know, coin to a guard and then throw one of these on the field. That'd be pretty bad. Uh, I mean, it's not that bad because the numbers still work out to equalize it. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into that detail. But really, the main reason why I'm not running the Quintet Wall is because of the 9 grade 3 count. I strongly believe that if you're going to run 9 grade 3s or more, you should not run a Quintet Wall. It can really mess with your defensive capabilities. So four, plus all the grade threes, you have all that discard fodder. So four Sentinel uh, Perfect Guards. Next, four Eternal Bringer Griffin. Uh, I'm running four of this just to add the consistency to be able to get primarily the break ride to my hand. If you don't open up with this in your opening hand, and because I'm also only running two of them, that's the main reason why I'm running this. With 9 grade 3s, you're likely to have the end because obviously there's 4 copies of it. So you can you can use Eternal Bringer Griffin to ditch the end for the break ride just to ensure that you'll be able to break ride. Or if you open up with something crazy like this or uh, this, you can ditch this to get that. Or You know, there's just a lot of options. So that's why for Eternal Bringer Griffin, he kind of helps me cheat my way into being able to run the deck with only two copies of this and two rebirth so that's that's why four of this is a must do for me at least next three dragon monk gojo same thing helps you if you really need to helps you ditch a three for uh, something more useful in that situation like if you have an extra one of these i've done that before i've discarded this to get another card or in, in hopes to help you draw into another copy of the end. Two Lizard Soldier Grom. So this is the, when it's placed on R, Soul Blast 2, Unflip 2. So this, this deck is pretty Counter Blast heavy. I would say because of this, this, um, this guy, if you ever want to use that. Although I almost never use this effect. Um, Birth, that's a Counter Blast 1. And Berserk Dragon's Counter Blast 2. So there's so much Counter Blast in the deck. So many cards that have Counter Blast effects. So it's more advantageous to run the Unflipper than the Soul Blast 2 draw card. So this definitely is really important. It's all about the restanding. And we have enough draw power and search power with Griffin and Gojo. Um, and again, that's this also... Along with this guy is the main reason why I tech Flame Edge Dragon in, just to get extra soul charge, just to help add more consistency to being able to pull off my soul blast based effects. So moving on to grade zeros. The most iconic critical trigger in the game, mainly it's the one that everybody saw Kai use against Ran in that most epic Vanguard match of season three, where he got that double critical trigger and it was this guy, the demonic dragon mage. 
So four of this guy, and probably the second most iconic critical that the Kagero have, Embodiment of Spear, Tar. So eight critical, very standard, and then four. Now you can run the the Gatling gun. I jo I chose Dragon Dancer Monaco mainly because I don't want I don't need to counter blast, uh, and I mean there's so much counter blast it's not really necessary. You can run that if you want. Mine are in my uh, Novell deck, which is why I don't have them in this one. I just kept them in the Novell one. But anyway, it's four. It's eight critical, four draw, and then four heal. So Kagro got a new heal. So standard lineup, and then the starter that I went with or chose to go with is Red Pulse Draco Kid. I chose this over Lizard Soldier Conroe because I find it more useful. There's nine grade threes, so it's a better. There's a higher chance of this actually being successful with nine grade threes. There's Persona Blast, there's uh, Cross Rides, there's Break Rides. I'm only running two of the Break Rides, so I want to increase the chances, the probability of me being able to open up with Dragonite Overlord as much as possible. So that's why I went with Red Pulse Draco Kid. And he goes into the Soul for a more Soul Blast. So that's why I just think he's more optimal uh, compared to Lizard Soldier Conroe, at least for the build that I went with. So let me know what you guys think of the deck. Uh, I, pretty, I think it's pretty cool running both of these guys in the same deck along with the break ride and even the original guy the original uh this guy so i like to call it my overlord deck let me know what you think in the comments what you would change grade grade one grade two wise or even grade three or even the triggers lineup or even the starter let me know what you think uh if you like the video please subscribe and stay tuned for more vanguard videos thanks